The origination of Crocs is a, is a wonderful story. Uh, it started back in 2002 when I personally was going through a rough time in my life. My good friend George Bodecker convinced me to go on vacation with him and we went down to Mexico to meet another good friend, Scott Siemens. While we were sailing in the Caribbean, Scott introduced us to a wonderful uh, new prototype product that uh, he, can, he was thinking was going to be a perfect boat shoe. And at first, when we looked at the original shoe with holes in it, uh, we thought, that's not something that would sell. We didn't think. But he was, he was very sure that it would. He said, you guys, just try the product on. It, it's a wonderful product. And over a couple of days of us wearing them on the boat, we, we agreed with Scott. And so about the fourth day, fifth day, going back, sailing back home uh, to Miami, uh, we decided to start a shoe company. It's very interesting in the fact that uh, George came from fast food. Uh, he was an, a franchising expert. Scott Siemens was a inventor and had, had a lot of success. And I had come from hardware and software sales. None of us had any idea how to start a shoe company. But we knew the product was a wonderful product and we wanted to give it a shot. So, we decided to go back to Boulder, Colorado, where we're all from, and start a company. And that was the beginning of Crocs. Initially, we had to come up with a name of the shoe. And we came up with the idea that the shoe is amphibious. And we couldn't call it Gator or something like that, which came to mind immediately because of the Florida Gators, for example, or Gators in the ski industry. But we also thought of crocodiles, and, and, and uh, we thought, wow, what a great idea. And it was just a, a stroke of genius because of the amphibious nature of the shoe, uh, the way that the shoe uh, works uh, on both dry land and in water. Uh, even when you, when you pick them up and you look at them and from the side, you can see a little snout. So it became a very, very uh, uh, catchy name for our product. It was, it was so fun to go back to our boat where we started the company and enter credit card orders. Uh, dial, I dialed them in on a cell phone one digit at a time for hundreds of orders that we had taken during the day. We were up all night just trying to put the credit cards through on a little cell phone. At that point, one time about four in the morning, I said, I think we're onto something. From our humble beginning, it's incredible to think that we're sold in over 120 countries around the world. We've sold more than 120 million pairs of shoes and have over 250 styles. Many people come to me all the time and say, you know, we love the Croc story and I have a great idea. How do I make my idea into the next Crocs? And, and I always tell them that I feel very fortunate that we hit a sweet spot in the marketplace. Uh, I had tried several times before and failed. And so the first thing, you, you cannot be afraid of failure. But once you have a product that you think that you can take to the masses, I always say, number one, you have to have enthusiasm for that product because it's just not going to happen overnight. That is the most important thing. Believe in your product and have endless energy in, in getting that to the marketplace. Uh, on the technical side of things, I think as an inventor, you always have to be beware of the fact that people uh, look for products and, and you need to protect your intellectual property. That's also very important so that you have a product to take to the market once it's been out there a little while. Most shoe manufacturers will go out and take orders from customers and build that number of shoes. We didn't look at it like that at all. What we did is we saw this huge demand, so we built as many shoes as we possibly could and then built a point of sale system where we could go hang those shoes on racks and let customers come in and buy the shoes uh, just when they, when they saw them. For example, 
a grandmother would come in and say, oh, look, that's a $30 pair of shoes. That's something that I can afford, a great price point, so I'm going to buy that for my grandson or granddaughter. And it, it was just a quick decision. And so we completely innovated um, in, the, in the footwear market the way that we sold the, the shoes. I think innovation helped us develop the next round of products that we sold and helped us grow. We've, we've gone from the original classic-like models uh, through many different iterations. Food service professionals loved Crocs. They could wear them all day long, get relief uh, from the, the backs and legs hurting. They could spill on the shoes, wipe them clean, and go on. But we innovated new products to be able to, be, uh, to address their specific needs. You could spill on the feet uh, and not have these holes in the top and so they wouldn't get messy. Uh, we, could, we could make them in certain colors that they needed for their uniforms. Doctors and nurses liked them because they could match their scrubs and so forth. The, the many colors that, that Crocs came in and still do come in provided a natural fit for the sporting, the sporting market, uh, teams, licensing. We've developed many um, relationships with licensees such as Disney where we could provide shoes in the entertainment area. And uh, I know from going to various theme parks around the country that everywhere you turn, there are children wearing shoes with their favorite character on them made by Crocs. And that's really fun to see.